gonna do a quick tag video. Got tagged by a fellow YouTuber named Claude Kill. How you doing, buddy? Uh, thanks for the tag. Um, his question of the day was, um, what are your three favorite budget titles? So if there wasn't any big name companies with big, the, here's where I had I, I kind of had a, yeah, with the question. I was trying to figure out whether or not he meant budget in the way that the um, cost of the game that you paid for was budget, but I think he meant it more in the way of the company that created the game had a small budget, you know, a budget game that way versus a, a big name game that you got for a budget price, so. We're going to have uh, the Buddha sit in with us tonight. I could use a little good karma, and we're going to get started here. Um, like I said, I think he meant um, budget titles uh, that were created by companies on a shoestring budget. Um, I kind of I kind of wondered about this, too, because a lot of times games are not created by the actual companies that publish the games. Like, Dragon Age Origins was created by Bioware, but it was released by uh, Electronic Arts, you know, something like that. You know, Electronic Arts is a company that's got the money, and Bioware's an up-and-comer, you know, and they've been putting a lot of money into their, you know, well, they're not up-and-coming anymore, they're here, but, um, you know, there's a lot of companies like that that are small and produce their game, and then they take it to a bigger company. Let me turn this down a little bit. Um, they take it to a bigger company to get them to publish it. And um, so that was a little hazy. I was a little hazy in that arena too. But maybe I'm overanalyzing the question like normal. I picked a few. Uh, I actually picked uh, three PlayStation games and one um, Nintendo game. And the reason why I picked three is two of them kind of go together, but they're actually from two different companies. Uh, the first one I picked... This was actually published by Sony. By Sony, it's a PlayStation 2 game, but it was developed by a company called Deep Space, and I'm pretty sure this was a a budget title when I bought it, probably a forty dollar, you know, thirty nine ninety five release. But it's the game Extermination. I don't know if you, any of you have ever played this. Um, I remember walking into the store, and the guy said, "Well, if you like Resident Evil, you might want to check this out. It's a third person, kind of over the shoulder." Um, game it's hard for me to get too close to the camera I don't have an auto focus so shit tends to get out of focus but um, just uh, google extermination PS2 if you want to check it out uh, the game looks crisp um, I never beat this but it kind of reminded me of a mix between Resident Evil and like Metal Gear as far as the stuff you could do you could hang from ledges and, and do different things but you also had Guns. The big deal with this is you got to be real careful with your ammo. It was one of those where they kind of don't give you enough to really, you know, stay ahead of the game, so to speak. But this game was one I remember paying like 40 bucks for. It was released at a lower price mark, and it was actually developed by a company called Deep Space, but it was published through Sony, so... I think it's a budget game for those reasons, for the price I paid for it, and the fact that the company that put it out um, is not Capcom or you know Electronic Arts or one of those companies. It's uh, you know Deep Space. So this next one also goes in that arena, and this was one of my. I remember when this game came out. It made me laugh. I thought it was too short, and I was glad they they made a sequel. So we'll we'll put these together, but. The first one was released by THQ, but it was developed by Viz Entertainment, which I assume, you know, is a budget company. But this game came out, it was $20 when it came out, but it was the Evil Dead Fistful of Boomstick. And it had uh, Bruce Campbell doing the voice of the character, which made the, made the game that much better. And um, I did beat this one. I thought it was great. I thought the twist of what, what weapon you had to use at the end to uh, beat the the final boss was really cool. And uh, I don't know. It was just really fun. 
I couldn't get enough of this. Of course, I love the Evil Dead movies. It's one of my favorite all-time uh, movies is Evil Dead 2. And um, I played Hail to the King. Never beat it, but when I got this one, I played through this one quickly. Uh, this one also walks hand in hand with that, and that's the second one, Evil Dead Regeneration. But this was designed by a company called Cranky Pants. <laughs> Cranky Pants Games, and then it was released through THQ. See, so technically, if you look at the corner of the, both of these, they say THQ. So you're thinking, oh, THQ designed them, but really, it was a smaller company that just released released them uh, over to THQ to publish. So these were twenty bucks a piece when they came out brand new. So I would consider that a budget title. So these were uh, extra sweet because of that. Um, so that's three PlayStation 2 games. So we're dipping back to the 8-bit NES uh, for the final one. This was a game that I really enjoyed, but it seemed like nobody else I really knew enjoyed it. Um, I remember renting it and playing it and, and never finishing it, but really uh, enjoying it. And um, when I got older, I wanted to get a box copy, and so I did. But uh, it's made by a company called Culture Brain. And uh, they only released six U uh, U.S. releases uh, total. So they were definitely a budget company. And uh, this game is called The Magic of Shaharazad. And um, it's just an awesome game. It had uh, action elements as, we as well as your uh, kind of uh, turn-based RPG elements. Uh, it reminds me a lot, looking back on it now, of a Prince of Persia-style game. Uh, as far as it's based in the uh, fantasy, you know, kind of the Arabian feel. The guy's got a turban on and, uh, you know, a vest and stuff. And looks like, you know, the Prince of Persia or, you know, Aladdin or something like that. So, um, But they only released six games total, uh, Culture Brain. Uh, the best known one's probably Kung Fu Heroes. Um, they also released one called Flying Dragon. I can't think of the other three offhand, but when I ordered this game, I got it from eBay, and I was so surprised when it came in the mail. This is the most crisp, minty box I actually have in my collection, and I'm real careful with it, and I'm so thankful. It does have the instructions. I'm so thankful that it's in such good shape. But, um... Anyway, I'm probably going to get out of here. I'm trying to find Fish's instructions out of here to show you. Here's the instruction book, and it is crispy as well. And um, I'll get out of here. This instruction book is actually in color, which is kind of surprising. Um, a lot of times, the instruction booklets are not in color in the NES, so it's kind of actually uh, pretty cool that it's in color and it's got a full color front on it and everything so okay I'm gonna tag a couple people I'm gonna try to think a lot of people are on summer vacation or something uh, but there are a few few guys around I uh, will tag Lafarius uh, if he wants to do it um, it's up to you buddy uh, don't even know if you'll uh, get around to watching this but hey uh, I might give you a heads up um, we'll tag uh, who Tag Retro Sofer if he, if he wants to do it, if he's around and uh, not on uh, vacation. And uh, we'll tag, um, we'll tag, uh, I don't know. We'll tag Alien Kiddo, man. I don't know if he's a budget guy, but hey, Alien Kiddo 92, I'll tag him. So, you're tagged, buddy. I'm out of here. Uh, talk to y'all later. Bye.